Hi, everyone. I'm Cantor Michael Shonkett, and it's my honor to tell you one of my favorite Hanukkah stories, the story called The Flying Latka by Arthur Urink, and it's art by William Steig. So let me tell you this story. Sit back, relax. I'm telling you, my family was nuts. Cuckoo. Totally mashuga. All right, all right. So maybe they're still a little mashuga. But you should have seen them last year. You think I'm kidding? Here, here's a picture. So new? Every day it was something else. This one didn't get along with that one. Someone wasn't speaking to someone else. The fights, the arguments, you shouldn't know from it. But then, I know it's hard to believe, a miracle happened. What? You don't think they happen? Sure they happen. Maybe not so often. Maybe once in a blue moon. But look, see for yourself. It all started on the first night of Hanukkah. The whole family was over. You know, Uncle Izzy, Aunt Sadie, Uncle Shecky, Aunt Etta, Aunt Esther, Uncle Al, Aunt Shirley, and oh yeah, all my cousins, Nettie, Letty, Howard, Cy, Sidney, Saul, Wolfie, Murray, Marvin, Tilly, Roberta, Pauline, and Bob. Anyway, my mother doesn't believe in appetizers. So there we were, standing around, starving, when finally my mother hollers, Dinner! Like bandits, we all ran into the dining room. Izzy, my mother said as she brought in her prized platter of latkes, It's Hanukkah! It's Hanukkah! Come light the menorah! But Izzy, Izzy was busy. Busy arguing, of course. What are you saying? Izzy shouted. I know cars, I know Fords, and that one was a Ford. It was a Buick, my Uncle Shecky bellowed. A Ford! A Buick! A Ford! Shecky, fit to be tied, picked up a pickle and waved it at Izzy. Izzy, Shecky said, shaking the pickle, you wouldn't know a Ford if it was sitting in your driveway with the dealer's sticker on it. A sticker, Izzy said. A sticker, said Shecky, as he gave the pickle one last shake, and well, you guessed it, the pickle took off like a rocket and hit Izzy right in the forehead. A sticker, Izzy yelled. I'll give you a sticker. Izzy picked up the salad bowl and dumped it on Shecky's head. Izzy, please, cried Sadie, not in front of the children. Sadie, Shecky announced, Izzy could throw all the food on this table, all the food we had at Esther's wedding, including the five kinds of melon balls, and still, still, the car that cut us off would be a Buick. That was it. The food flew. The chicken, the borscht, the sour cream, the bread, even the chocolate Hanukkah gelt. In no time, there was nothing left. Nothing but a few latkes, and the largest one was in Izzy's hand. Izzy, my mother pleaded, not the latka, it's Hanukkah. But Izzy was Izzy. I'll show you a Buick, he said. His wrist gave a flick, and the latka went flying. Yeah! Everyone screamed as the latka flew over Shecky's head and right out the window into the night sky. I raced to the window to see where the latka would land, and, well, I know this is weird, but it didn't. I mean, it didn't come down. The latka just kept going. You're happy? You're happy now, my mother said to both Shecky and Izzy? My whole dinner that I slaved over. Sylvia, my father said to my mother, calm down. Everybody, calm down. Come, let's all go sit in the living room and cool off. We'll sit, we'll watch TV. Most of the time, when my father talks, nobody listens. But this time, who knows why? We listened. We shuffled into the living room, and Sydney turned on the television. We sat, we schmoozed, and suddenly we heard the following. We interrupt this program to give you a news bulletin. A UFO has just been spotted flying over the New Jersey Turnpike, said an anchorman from the 6 o'clock news. It's a small object, he continued, and already there is speculation that we just might be encountering visitors from another planet. 
This could be a momentous moment for humanity. Luckily, we have some videotape taken by a salesman in Trenton. Let's take a look. Our eyes were peeled on the TV when my Aunt Etta shrieked, It's the latka! The latka! It was the latka. My mother's latka was flying over New Jersey. You see? You see? You had to throw it out the window, my mother complained to Izzy. The news bulletin continued. The Air Force has now confirmed the sighting of the UFO and has made several attempts to communicate with the object. But there has been no response. This could be a sign of hostile intent. In fact, wait, this just in. A decision from the White House has been handed to the Air Force. They will try to shoot down the UFO. My latka, screamed my mother. Morty, they're going to shoot down my latka. Call the police. Call the president. Sylvia, please. Morty! What could he do? My father picked up the phone and called the first Air Force base he could find. It was in Maine. No, Colonel, it's a latka, my father yelled into the phone. Izzy threw it out the window and, no, latka, L-A-T. No, look, it's a potato pancake for Hanukkah. Hanukkah. C-H-A. No, no, it's a holiday. You know the Maccabees against all odds defeated the... No, Maccabees. M-A-C. Listen here. Who are you calling a crackpot? Oh, yeah, well, you're a crackpot. You're the one that's shooting missiles at a potato pancake. My father slammed the phone down, and my mother started to cry, and Sadie had to lie down. You had to throw the latka, Esther yelled at Izzy. Look at what you're doing to your sister. What's the matter? A piece of celery wasn't good enough? Look, Esther, maybe if Sylvia had served a little something when we got here. Oh, no, now it's my wife's fault, my father joined in. I haven't seen Sadie cook a meal since Irving moved to Long Island. Morty, Sadie cried, when was the last time you picked up a pot? The fighting went on like this for hours. Maybe we should go, said Shecky. What? said Etta. How can I go home after this? You think they won't find out that it's our latka? Etta, my father said. They don't know you had anything to do with this. They know, Etta continued. Believe me, they know. At that, the doorbell rang. Go see who it is, Danny, my father said. It's the FBI, Dad, I called from the front hallway. Oi, I'm plotzing, shrieked Etta. Izzy, go talk to them. Me, why should I? Izzy began. But with the look everyone gave him, he shrugged and went to the door. Though we tried to listen, we couldn't hear the FBI men, who, by the way, were all tall. But we did hear Izzy. Yes, my name is Isidore Feldman, he was saying. Yes, I make zippers for a living. A very comfortable living, I might add. What? Oh, yes, the UFO was here, right in this house. Yes, I think it was made of potatoes. Izzy didn't get a chance to say much more. Within minutes, the house was surrounded by a mob of reporters. That's it, Etta said, looking out the window. We're not leaving here until this blows over. But, but we have no food in the house, my father started to say. It was no use. Surrounded and hounded by onlookers and reporters and Hollywood producers, we were trapped in the house for days, eight days, and eight nights, to be exact. And so tell me, tell me if what happened next wasn't a miracle. As my mother's latke flew around the world, our plates of latkes, the only food we had, which should have lasted with this crowd about seven and a half minutes, lasted for eight days. Don't ask. The whole family, fressing on latkes alone, stayed and didn't argue or even complained at all. Epis, that was a miracle. On the last night of Hanukkah, as we looked longingly at our empty platter, suddenly the flying latka flew through the window into the house and landed, boom, right on the plate. We all stared at the amazing latka until Izzy quietly piped up. All right, he said. Maybe it was a Buick. Shecky and Izzy hugged. Etta cried. And Esther turned to my mother, pointing to the locky and said, 
Sylvia, I want that recipe. Yes, it was a happy Hanukkah. Amen. What a great story. I hope you enjoyed it. You can check this story out at any time at our Temple Library. Have a happy Hanukkah.